Hello friends, it's book time with our priest, Father Teochuku, and our book for today is um, Think Big by Ben Carson. Very remarkable and beautiful book. Before we begin, I would like to share this interesting, you know, I'm a storyteller, I would like to share this interesting story with you. An American man called Aud Who was a famous slave merchant. He had a number of slaves who were living with him. One day, this man came home and saw his wife, Sophia Hu, teaching one of his slave boys, Frederick Douglass, how to read. When this man saw this, he was outraged. He became red with anger, turned to his wife and asked, Sophia, why? Why are you teaching this boy how to read? You are destroying his value as a slave. If you teach him how to read, over time he will learn how to write and then he will rise and fight his status as a slave. He will get discontented, disillusioned with his status as a slave and he will be running away. This was the most prophetic statement ever made because through to prediction, Freddie Douglas, having been taught how to read, he learned how to write. He got disaffected and discontented with his status as a slave. He felt it was beneath his dignity because by learning how to read, he empowered his mind and was able to break free from mental slavery. And he ended up being one of the foremost slave abolitionists in the world. He was at the vanguard of the movement that brought to an end the abolishment of slavery in the world. This story captures for me how powerful reading can be, how liberating reading can be, how empowering reading can be. This book, Think Big by Ben Carson, is for me one of the most powerful tributes ever paid to reading. For me, it is a tribute to how powerful reading can be. Here you encounter the moving story of two boys, Ben and his brother Kutis, who were performing so poorly in the class and how their mother, Sonia Kassin, took a decision that changed the destiny of these two boys. Sonia Kassin, a single mother, uneducated, was doing many jobs to make ends meet. She observed something, that every time her children come home with a result that is nothing to write home about, failure. This woman was bothered and she kept asking herself, what am I gonna do? If I allow my kids to continue like this, there will be no future. We will remain in poverty forever. What am I going to do? Now, one day as she was doing her work, because part of her work was to keep house for wealthy people, she observed something, that almost all the wealthy people she has worked in their house have libraries where they stack books, and that their kids have a routine of reading book when they come back from school, they have time for reading. Now, in her own case, her own kids, once they come back from school, they flip their bag this way, flip their uniform this way, and the next thing, now then they feel the play. And this woman said, oh, this could be the secret of success for these worthy people reading. And my own kids, look at the way they are living their life. You no, know, something has to change. So one day this woman called Ben and his brother, sat them down and then told them, something has to change. Henceforth, every week, two of you must be reading two books and summarizing them for me. And then you'll be watching all the two TV programs that will not spend more than, was it one hour or two hours that she told them? The moment this woman said this, Ben and his brother got alarmed. They charged and told their mom, Mom, we're not going to do this. But they knew their mom. Once her mind is made up, there is no going back. So, what did they do? They started going to the library to borrow books, um, read and summarize for their mom. Over time, the neighbors were no longer seeing Ben and his brother outside. And they started asking their mom, how come, where are your kids? We don't see them outside, play with other kids. 
And the mom said, oh, my kids, guys are reading their book. Their neighbors were like, what? Why are you keeping those boys inside? Those boys belong to belong to the field. Why are you keeping them? They're going to hate you when they grow up. Allow them to move around with their fellow kids. So the cousin said, I don't care. Let them hate me for all they care. So far, they'll make something out of their life. The rest is history. From reading the two books every week, Ben, who was regarded as the dumbest kid in the class, ended up becoming the smartest kid in his class. One day, an incident happened that marked a turning point in the life of Ben. It was a day a geography teacher was teaching them something on rock formation. And then a question was asked about the rock that forms as a result of cooling effects of volcanic eruption. Even the smartest kid in the class could not attempt the question. Yet Ben stood up. When Ben stood up to answer the question, the whole class looked at him in a mocking and insulting way. But to their surprise, Ben answered obsidian rock. The class was waiting on the teacher to know what would be the reaction. And the teacher said, correct. The whole class was stunned. They couldn't believe it. How come the dumbest kid in the class answering the toughest question and becoming the smartest kid in the class? That was the power of reading. The books Ben was reading, the, Ben was reading, we are transforming his mind unknown to him. Ben will end up graduating as the best in his class and getting admission to one of the Ivy League colleges in America, Yale, ending up becoming the first black American to successfully separate cement twins, becoming one of the most remarkable neurosurgeons in the world. His brother ended up becoming an aviation engineer. Reading is powerful. The story in this book is so inspiring. It will inspire anybody. If you are there listening to me, do you have self the favor of reading this book? Trust me, I read this book um, two years to becoming a priest in my theology too. And I was like, where was this book all through my life? How come I didn't read this book in my secondary school? Anybody who is still in the secondary school, I pray you to read this book. The inspiration from this book will help you to make certain decisions about your life. And it's not so costly. This one I'm having, I think I bought it, was it 400 or 500 pounds? You can even get it online, a soft copy or whatever. And then parents, if you are a parent listening to me, see how you can get this book for your child. See if your child, see how you can make your child to read this book. If your child doesn't like reading, bribe your child. I know a mother whose daughter doesn't find interest in reading book, who decided to be bribing her daughter in order to get her to read. She would tell her daughter, if you finish, you can give me this amount. She was doing it. The daughter was reading and getting the money. Over time, the daughter automatically developed love for reading. And the mother no longer needs to bribe her again. It will be a win-win for you and your daughter. So I'm going to challenge every parent listening to me. See how you can get your child to pick up this book. And you see, so that you see how a mother took a decision that changed the life of her children. How a mother succeeded even where teachers failed. I want to challenge you. Books are powerful. Books will empower your mind. Books will liberate you from mental slavery. Books will, will, will widen your vision and horizon about life. Books, reading is a way of feeding the mind. Just like the way you eat ordinary food to feed your body. You see, human body is, human life is made up of two dimensions. It's known as psychosomatic, the psycho, the mind, the somatic, the body. As you eat normal food like um, bread, rice, name them, you feed the body. You eat balanced diet so that your body will develop where the muscles and the bones will form very well. If you don't eat well, you suffer from pressure. The same thing applies to reading. If you read, you develop the mind, you empower them. If you don't, you suffer from mental pressure. That's why sometimes you see a 20 year old man so big but when the person behaves you see the mindset of a, a 13 year old or 10 year old kid so you see that the bodily growth does not measure with the intellectual growth reading will solve that problem and this book is so powerful and one of the things that made this book so interesting that it's a biography and one of the things about biography that biography will help you to see the humble beginning of, of somebody who has become so successful 
for you to know that his path to success wasn't automatic. It was a process. So this book will reveal a whole lot. You see that this Ben Carson, who has become so popular, has become so ready than life, that was a time he was the dumbest kid in the class. Your child can move from that status. You, listen to me, can move from that position. I would advise you, look for this book. It's going to inspire you. It's going to challenge you. It's going to turn your life around. It's going to make a turning point in your life. Do this, I will never regret. Thank you for listening. See you next time as we as we review another book on Farajus or Faratujuku's um, book time. God bless you. Let me put the book back in the shelf as we wait for next week to review another beautiful book. Thank you. Bye bye.